One of the common mistakes that I see on jabs, is very, very specifically on jabs or, or, or just lead straights in general, uh, I don't generally make a distinction between jabs and lead straights. Some people do. You know what I'm saying. Um, the, the point is that one of the, the biggest mistakes that I see on them is people actually moving their mass away from the punch. Now, a, a lot of people understand that just because of the way that they're standing already, that in order to get the hip turn, the shoulder turn into the jab, they're going to end up in a very or, or almost sideways position. Um, you know, from a Wing Chun perspective, right, we would use this from the pole form, in which case, it, you know, this is coming out, right, we're coming out with the pole and I'm ending up completely sideways or almost completely sideways at the very least. I mean, yeah, we have our, our vertical straight, which is much more in line with Jack Dempsey's jolt. Um, and that's not really what we're talking about here, just because of the way that Dempsey taught with the drop step, the way that we teach with uh, uh, our certain body structure, um, things tend not to rotate as much there. But as soon as you're doing a rotational straight, uh, it is important to understand that your mass needs to go with the strike and not away from it. Except there is a there is kind of a one exception there. Um, we'll get to that in a second. So this is something that I, I teach people in, uh, in Wing Chun when we do shifting. Now, I did a video a while ago on the shifting that we do in Wing Chun, and uh, I think it's actually pertinent here. Uh, it, but the idea, in when, when we stand and we start off square, and uh, because we have a more upright stance, if, if we're shifting into another stance, you could look at this, uh, you know, in karate going from like a horse stance and drawing into a cat stance or something too. Very similar idea. Um, what we're not doing is we're not just kind of like whipping our hips to the side and, and, and pulling away. Uh, we're not actually trying to pull away from the target. What we're trying to do is change the line as well as change our weight distribution. And so when I do that and I'm dropping my weight on one side, you'll notice that this shoulder is coming forward while this shoulder is kind of hooking. So it ends up creating this like Nike swoosh thing, right? Um, you know, I wish there was something better than that as a descriptor. Um, but you get what I'm saying, right? The far side of my body is kind of curving around while the other side is just making a straight line forward. And what's not happening is I'm not pushing this side forward and pushing this side back because if I push this side back, then I end up staying in the same place and it doesn't actually help. And I need this side to come forward and I need this side to change. So what ends up happening is as I'm shifting to the side and I push this side forward, this shoulder is actually kind of getting replaced. Boom. There's that swoosh in there. So it's the same thing when I'm throwing a jab. I don't want to just rotate in place because by pulling this shoulder back, I'm really not displacing anything. And then I'm not actually going forward with anything. Now you could say, well, you're supposed to be stepping with it anyway. Sure, sure. You're still not doing what you could with your shoulders. You really should be launching that forward. So when you're there and you're about to throw this forward, as this side goes forward, this side should actually be kind of button hooking. That's a better term, right? That side should be button hooking around to, as you go forward, to kind of be replacing a point on that line or on that curve. Boom. So everything is going in. So when I'm here, right, I'll go right hand for, for you on this. When I see people do this and they push themselves away, what ends up happening? You end up making like no contact, right? No penetration whatsoever. Now this is where I'm gonna bring in the exception. There is an exception here. And that is if you're gonna be throwing the lead leg kick, sometimes that can be a nice distraction to get in for the kick. And that's fine, right? That's absolutely fine. That's also where you can use a finger jab. That's where you can use a push or a palm, something like that. And that, that's fine, right? That's a very specific kind of tactic where you're throwing the hand as a distraction to mask a weight shift uh, for a kick. But if I actually want that jab to land, right? Like, look at this here, right? 
if I move my shoulder away, there's no penetration difference. If I move my shoulder in and this shoulder forward and button hook around, it moves. And that's the point, I'm getting that mass drive in. So as I'm driving this in and pushing my weight forward, whether you're stepping or not, you never know what's gonna happen in a fight. You may be stationary at some moment and throw the jab there, and more than likely you're gonna be moving. The point here is the motion of the hips and shoulders. The point is that as I'm coming in, that I'm driving everything into it. So even with that turn, as I'm pushing this in, I'm just letting this slide into that line, right? And it's just hooking around into that line like a machine, right? So as I'm coming in, it's just driving, right? Boom, boom, and there we go, right? Every time you do that, I want your mass behind it. I don't want you just flicking with the arm. And again, there's time and place for that. There's absolutely a time and place for that. But that's when you're like playing tricks and doing setups and stuff like that. If you're actually trying to make the jab land and do something, right? If you're actually trying to make it have an effect as a punch and not as a setup, then you need that mass drive in there. All right, so uh, that's that. And uh, I'll talk to you guys again later. Good journey. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, share this with your friends or anybody else who might be interested in this kind of content. If you happen to be in the Metro Phoenix area, come in for a class or just stop in to say hi, we'd love to meet you. Definitely check out our socials and our website that has all of our contact information and all of the other relevant information. And more than anything, check out our Substack. Our Substack will be containing all of the links that we, uh, that we use to uh, cite and reference uh, in our videos as well as uh, exclusive training content that will be available for premium members. Memberships are cheap, but you can also sign up for free and we will have, we do have articles for free and we will have more uh, free articles available for you. It is a fantastic platform for what we're doing here and uh, we hope to see you over there. So uh, I will talk to you guys later and uh, look out for the next one. Good journey.